Hi every, I nearly said hi everything. What? Okay, take two, start again. Hi everyone, welcome to episode five of my frugal living series. This is just where I'm sharing the tips and tricks that Martin, my husband and I have been living frugally for the last 11 years. We are mortgage and debt free and when we gave up teaching 11 years ago we had to change our lifestyle quite drastically and we've now found with the cost of living crisis and the you know the fuel uh, energy electricity and everything going up in price that these little tips and tricks that we've been using for the last few years are coming in really handy so I just thought I'd share them and thanks to everyone that's left comments with their own little um, ideas as well. Really useful. So thank you for that. So the, one of the first things that we decided to do when we moved here was to try and like make stuff instead of buying it. And one of the things that Martin decided he was going to have a go at doing was making his own beer. And I'll show you in a second what his setup is. This saves a lot of money. Martin likes his real ale and he enjoys making the beer. So, you know, sometimes the things that you do to save money don't have to be a hardship. You know, you can kind of turn it into a hobby almost. So I'll show you around his, his setup and talk to you a bit about that now. So this is Martin's little beer brewing area. We're down in the garage, so I apologise for the light. I think he got these barrels from like Facebook Marketplace and from car boot sales, you often find, you know, if people are um, doing brewing or whatever as a hobby and then they sell everything off. So he did pick up everything quite cheaply to start with. And you can see here, he's got one on the go in there. Um, and I'll just show you over here. This funny looking thing is the actual beer brewing. He's put this jacket round it because Obviously it's cold, but underneath there is a big barrel of beer brewing and he heats them up on these little, they're like um, little heat pads. And then obviously because it's got cold, he's put the, the jacket around it. So yeah, it's, um, it's really good. He reckons it works out about 40 pence a pint, which, you know, compared to going out to the pub and paying five or six pounds is a massive, massive saving. The second tip I've got is to keep an eye on all your direct debits and your banks and your phone subscriptions and all this kind of thing because you can save money by switching. I know there's all these adverts on the TV but you actually can, you really can. It doesn't take long and it could save you a fortune. So next week I'm going to go to Vodafone because I have a mobile uh, contract with them which is running out I don't want a new phone so I'm going to switch to a sim only deal which is going to probably halve what I pay I currently pay £24 a month I think it is and when I've investigated it I should be able to get that down to about £12 so it is really worth you know looking around looking at who your gas and electricity is with looking at you know, anything that you pay out for, make sure you're you're on the cheapest that you can be. You know, obviously, if I'd wanted a new phone, which I don't because the one I've got is absolutely fine, then, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do this switching to the SIM only. But actually, it's going to suit me fine and I'd much rather pay them £12 than £24. So, yeah, hopefully I'll get that sorted out next week. I'll let you know. And the other thing is, and if you do sign up to the Martin Lewis emails, you'll get all this information. But it's worth looking at your banking as well and working out whether you're with the best bank or whether you could switch. Because a lot of the banks will give you money for switching to them. You normally have to stay with them for a year. You normally have to have a couple of direct debits coming out and you normally have to be paying a certain amount in each month but we do it by having several bank accounts and basically swapping the money from each one I don't know if that you're really supposed to do that but anyway um, and often they'll give you over a hundred pounds just for 
for swapping to them. So again, do your research on this. Martin tends to do all of this. I'm not very good at the maths and the money side of things. So he tends to do all that. But he's got us loads of money from, you know, switching bank accounts. They want your custom. So, you know, we get free cinema tickets. We've had £125 each, I think it was, of Marks and Spencer's vouchers. We just swapped to... I can't remember which one it was now and and got 125 pounds so if you can have a look at your banking spend a couple of hours doing some research it is it could be well worth it so tip number three is about heating and there's a couple of little tips in here now we don't have central heating as you know we um wear lots of clothes as you can see i've got all my layers on here and we have a little heater, but we do live in South Devon and it's very mild here. So I totally understand if you live somewhere colder, you do need to put your heating on. Um, but I've come up with a few tips. I did some research and I've come up with some tips that might be useful. So the first one is to turn your radiators down. Turn your, sorry, turn your thermostat down, even if it's by only one degree or a couple of degrees, it can make a massive difference to your bill. And hopefully if you've got a few more clothes on, you won't notice the difference in, you know, in terms of you feeling cold. The other thing is, is to make sure your radiators are clean and, and free of dust, because apparently they work better. And also make sure you're, you bleed your radiators so that there's no air in them. Again, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look this up. It's very easy, apparently. We used to have to do it quite a bit when we lived in Froyle, and even I could do it, so it can't be that difficult. Um, other people as well say that they put reflective foil behind the radiators to reflect the heat away from the walls of the house into the room. Again, that can be really helpful. And you can also get a thing called a thermostatic radiator valve, which goes onto each individual radiator and allows you to, um, you know, turn the, the heat up and down as needed and also to switch them off completely. So if you're not in a particular room, you could do that. Or if you know, you know, one of the rooms in your house needs to be much warmer and others need to be a bit cooler, again, that can help. Um, apparently they cost about five to six pounds online and also think about drafts how how is cold getting into your house as well as pulling curtains think about old-fashioned things like draft excluders you can also get um, a keyhole little things that you put into your keyhole to stop the draft coming through and you can also get a stuff a thing called draft excluder tape which doesn't cost a great deal. And again, I don't really need it because we've our windows are actually quite good and are double glazed, but you can get this, it's like a little sticky tape that you can stick around your windows to stop the draft coming in. And again, it's very inexpensive. You can buy it online and it, it only costs a couple of pounds. So that might be worth it as well. I also was reading an article about the best heaters to you so if you didn't want to put switch your central heating on you just wanted to heat one room best one in terms of like the lowest cost per hour is one from wilkinson's it costs 23 pounds to buy it and it costs at the top rate 18 pence per hour and that is the cheapest one they they researched and uh, a whole load of them and that was the cheapest one so i'll pop a picture of it up that was Wilkinson's and I think on the lower um, bar it's only 13 pence per hour. We've got one of these and they're brilliant because you can switch it on for like half an hour and it does heat up just the one room. So I would recommend those as well. Tip number four is to eat seasonal foods. Now you'll find that seasonal fruit and veg is so much cheaper. If you start buying strawberries for example, you know in November they're going to cost you a lot of money because they're not in season. So they're often shipped in from who knows where and they're going to cost you more money. Um, you can have a look online to see what is in season. But generally you'll find when you go in the supermarkets or the green grocers, 
the things that are in season are a little bit cheaper but I just did a quick bit of research so for this month it's apples, blackberries, pears, beetroots, broccoli, aubergine, brussels sprouts, squashes, carrots, cauliflower, swede, onions, parsnips, potatoes, corn, there's lots more like I said look it up online and when you think about it they are the sort of foods that our bodies need at this time of the year. There's a great book by a lady called Jane Alexander called The Natural Year and I really recommend it. I love it. And it talks about how we've kind of lost the connection with the earth because we live in centrally heated houses and we have all of the food available all year round. But if you really start thinking about it and really listen to your body, you know, what is better this time of the year than a nice warming like roast with parsnips and potatoes and squash, Brussels sprouts, you know, um, apple crumble, that kind of thing. That's, that's what we need. That's what our bodies need at this time of the year. Not really strawberries, you know, they're kind of what we need in the summer. So, yeah, try and try and eat seasonally. It, it's much better for the planet and it's much better for our bodies and hopefully for our wallets as well. My last tip is, is something I kind of just wanted to chat about really and I'm interested to see what you all think is, well, it's two things really. Um, first of all, prepping. So, you know, being prepared by buying food that is sh shelf life stable. Now, I haven't done this this year because I thought we would be moving and I still think that we'll be moving. I just don't know when. I, I don't think it's going to be any time soon. And when I went to Fuerteventura at the beginning of this year, I left in January and I came back in March and I was shocked, really, really shocked by how much food had gone up in price um, and I think personally that it is going to go well it has kept it's still going up and I think it is going to go up so I think if you can afford it um, and you've got the storage space and everything doing some prepping is a good idea buy foods that are shelf life stable so things like tins and packets that have a long shelf life so that then you know they're not going to go to waste if there's something that you use loads of and it's on an offer, stock up on it, keep it at home. I'm going to be doing this over the next couple of months, to be honest, because I want to make sure I've got enough food for when I come back from Fuerteventura. But I'm not like a kind of a proper prepper, as it were. I, I don't can food and I don't have like a year's supply or anything like that. But I am going to do a bit of prepping. So... I think I'm going to be a kind of like a middle of the road type prepper because I think if you can get a few things in, um, you know, and then you've got them, haven't you? And um, that's that's what I'm going to do anyway. So when I start doing some stocking up and some prepping, I will show you what I've got. But let me know, do you know, do you have a stock? Do you think it's a good idea or do you tend to kind of live week to week? Um, the other thing is, and this is kind of tied in because it's going to depend how we're going to cook the food that we've, that we've prepped, is this um, talk about blackouts. Now, I don't actually watch the mainstream news. I stopped watching it during the pandemic because it, I just felt they were completely scaremongering and also, because I was in Fuerteventura during most of the pandemic, I I tended to read um, Canarian news rather than UK news. But anyway, I'm not going to go on about that now. But I don't tend to watch the news. But what I do do is I read articles and I listen to different people. You know, I kind of pick and choose what I, what I want to listen to and what I want to read. And... There is talk of blackouts. I don't know how true this may or may not be. Um, and I'm not going to rush out and buy loads of stuff. However, I am going to make sure that I'm prepared. So um, I think I've got several things already around my house that could be useful if there is a blackout. And when I'm buying food 
for my kind of prepper area, I will be considering the fact that perhaps it might be difficult to, to actually cook stuff. Although generally food in tins has already been cooked. So worst case scenario, you could eat it cold or it takes very little, you know, to heat it up. Um, so I am going to do that and I, I will try and do a separate little video about, you know, what I'm going to do. But again, it's it, a lot of this is common sense and kind of going back in the day, you know, make sure you've got some candles, make sure you've got um, like a, a reuse, not reusable, uh, like a wind up torch we've got. And um, we've also got in the car, we bought a really cheap, Nokia phone. I think it cost 99p or a pound. It's a pay as you go, so we put £10 of credit on it. And we've got a charger that plugs into the cigarette lighter in the car. So if we need, you know, if all the other phones were not working and all the, the lines were down, worst case scenario, I needed to um, use it. it. It lasts its charge for ages. You do have to be a bit organised and remember to charge it when you're driving round. Um, but yeah, again, a really inexpensive thing. Um, you know, make sure you've got an idea of what, what would you do in a blackout? You know, it depends what time of day it is, obviously. But, you know, you, if you've got an iPad or an iPhone or whatever, could you download some things to watch on it or some podcasts to listen to? Um, if you've got maybe one of these like headlight things that you can get, you could sit and read a book. Um, if it's in the evening obviously if you've got an open fire then you're laughing we had an open fire where we lived in Hampshire and we used to get quite a lot of power cuts actually um, and we would just light the fire they, it was always in the evening as well but we'd light the fire I would usually ring Domino's pizza which was a bit naughty and not very frugal but um they would deliver us our dinner and, and we'd sit and read or play cards or whatever. Um, and, and it was fine. But if you don't have a fire, again, you need to think about this. How are you going to keep warm? You know, again, blankets and clothes and things. And it it's probably worth just having maybe a bag or a basket that you know exactly where it is. In case there's a blackout, you can grab it and you've got everything that you need. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not quite sure yet. And if I do, I will let you know. But yeah, that's I, I just wondered what everyone else thought about that. So let me know in the comments below. It'd be really interesting to hear your views. I think that is it for today. I think I've chatted on for long enough. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you again soon. Bye.